Hello friends and welcome back to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. Today we are beginning a new project that will be a recurring project on my channel and combining that with a full game demo, which I haven't done before uh, with this particular game. It's called Season Ticket Baseball and uh, this is the, these are the final revised rules for season ticket. I have some other demos for season ticket on the baseball demo playlist on my channel, which I encourage you to check out. If you're looking for a new sim or a different sim or just something to shake things up a little bit in your hobby world, I have a lot of demos under the baseball demo playlist on my channel and you can browse to your heart's content. Adding to that, pretty much every month I bring a new demo. Next month I have another one coming um, that I think you're going to like as well. I don't know if I've ever done on my channel before, so we'll talk about that uh, in a few weeks. Today we are starting um, a new project a project where uh, I am going to replay the second half of the 1981 split season for the Chicago Cubs. And of course, Bill Buckner was a member of that ball club. In 1981, the Chicago Cubs were coming off of a last place finish in 1980. They had a, a manager going into his first full year, Joey Amalfitano. The Wrigley family was actively trying to sell the club and that would be achieved late in the 1981 season, um, or during the 1981 season, I should say. And the big news of the 1981 season, of course, was the strike that took place, started in June and went all the way until early August. At that point, there were a number of questions to be decided. Was the season just going to continue? Were they going to do a split season of some fashion? And it was really kind of a, a crazy period in Major League Baseball history. But the second half of the season amounted to uh, a sprint to the finish for the second half title. And the interesting thing to me about that is that as we went through the COVID experience of 2020, the COVID season of 2020 started right around when the uh, 1981 second half of the split season started. And people weren't really talking about that, but there were a lot of comparisons, I thought, to be made between those two experiences. This Cub team, I would argue, is one of the worst ever. Um, they started off, the first half was horrible. They went out, they got off to a horrible start, and then they traded their best pitcher, Rick Rushell, and their catcher, Barry Foote, to the New York Yankees uh, shortly before uh, the strike happened. Well, Foote got traded about a month into the season. Rushell got traded a little bit later. But... So they got off to a bad start, and then they got rid of two of their most important players. But in the second half, and this is why I'm taking on this project, in the second half, uh, because it was a short season of sorts, this awful Cub team was in the race to win the second half title really until the last week, about halfway through the last week of the season. Um, so I'm wondering if I can just kind of snake my way into the playoffs with this club, if I do it right. I'm uh, going to start with as-played lineups. going to always do as-played lineups for the opposition. I'm going to follow the pitching that Joey Malfitano chose for each day's starting pitcher. And then I'm going to make up my own lineups as we go. I'm going to follow the transactions. I'll have the players that Amalfitano had, and we'll see what happens. In terms of our demo, I'm going to do season ticket baseball, starting out now with the 
quick start card. So this will be, I don't want to call it the basic version because season ticket baseball is a pretty comprehensive piece of work. But I'm going to start with the quick start card for the first few games and then we're going to transition and add more layers to it as we go along. So um, hopefully that'll make sense. And if you haven't played the game before, you'll hopefully get a sense of how it works. The other thing I want to mention before we get into the lineups for today, uh, well, actually a couple of things. First of all, if you haven't checked out channel membership on my channel, now is a great time to do so. I have the link for channel membership posted in the description for this video. And you get discounts on the secondary store, which the August secondary store will be coming up shortly. So it's a good time to join as a member if you have not. You also get uh, free PDFs of cards that I've made for games uh, every month as a thank you for being a member. You get exclusive videos including World Series uh, replays and I'm doing a new King of the Hill project on the member side only. So you have to be a member to access those videos. And my favorite part is where I take a topic each month that the members vote on and I create a video that compares different cards and dice baseball sims in different respects. The first few I've done include ballpark effects and base running. So we'll see what, we'll see what folks hold for for this month as well. All right. The date is August 10th, 1981. The Cubs have played two exhibition games. 81 was a crazy strike season because during that five or six weeks that the players were not playing ball, some of them worked out, some of them didn't. Some of them stayed in shape, some of them didn't. And so it was kind of a mixed bag when you came back, you didn't know what you had. The Cubs played a home-and-home -home series with the White Sox, one game in Comiskey Park, and then the second game in Wrigley Field. And then they started this uh, second half against the Mets. It's a four-game series in Wrigley Field against Joe Torre's New York Mets. So let's see what happens. We'll go to the starting lineups right now. Okay, the lineups for today's game go like this for Joe Torre's Mets. Leading off in center field, it's Mookie Wilson. Batting second and shortstop, Frank Tavares. Batting third and left field, Lee Mazzilli. Batting fourth, the first baseman, Dave Kingman. Batting fifth, the right fielder, Ellis Valentine. Batting sixth, the third baseman, Hubie Brooks. Batting seventh, behind the plate, John Stearns. Batting eight, the second baseman, Doug Flynn. And on the mound is right-hander Mike Scott. Now, Mike Scott, 23 starts in 1981, 5-10 record, one complete game, good for an ERA of 3.90. All righty. For the homestanding Cubs, here is Joe Amalfitano's batting order and lineup, and I am using it today. Yvonne De Jesus will lead off at shortstop. Steve Dillard bats second at second base. Bill Buckner bats third at first base. Leon Durham bats fourth. He'll play right field. Bobby Bonds bats fifth. He'll play center. Jerry Morales bats sixth. He'll play left field. Ken Reitz bats seventh. He'll be at third base. And Jody Davis will start at catcher and bat eighth. Mike Kruko gets the start in the first game of the second half. He had 25 starts in 1981, good for a 9-9 record, two complete games, and a 3.68 earned run average. All right, to do season pitch, we need three dice. We need the most important die of all is the red D6. Then we have the white d10 which will be our tens digit and the blue d10 will be our ones digit mookie wilson steps in the batter's box against mike kruko and we are ready to go at wrigley field we also need of course our ballpark chart which is right here 
for Wrigley Field in 1981. And here we go with the first pitch of the game. We have a 255. Going to go a little bit slow to start here so we can all be on the same page about what I'm doing. We're in the 200 here. So Mookie Wilson, of course, a switch hitter. So he's batting left-handed against Mike Kruko. We have a two, which puts us in the 200 zone, which is right here. A 55, which takes us down to the strikeout. Hey, got him with the broccoli cauliflower medley. Yes. And one down in the Mets first. Frank Tavares comes up now. The pitch is a 147. And, oh, we didn't do weather. Got to do weather. Got to do weather. But let's do this first. A 147 is on the pitching chart here. No splits on the 100 level. A 147 is a base on balls to Tavares. All right. Now, we got to do the, the weather. Um, we are in August. And we have a... So for so we have a base temperature. This is a day game. All day games in 1981 at Wrigley Field. So we have a temperature greater than. Um, I'm sorry. No, we have a 67 degree average for our base temperature. It falls between 55 and 85. So there will be no adjustment based on weather for deep drives in this particular game. All right, so Tavares goes down to first. It's one out, one on for Lee Mazzilli. Movie star handsome, some would say. The pitch from Mike Kruko is a 162, and it's another walk. So we have a couple of bases on balls after the strikeout of Mookie Wilson. And Mike Kruko has got a little first inning trouble, and here comes Kong, Dave Kingman. Cub infield, of course, playing for two. The pitch to Kingman is a 220. And that's here. He's a right handed batter. And that is strike three on a bender. Kong does not like the curveballs. Two gone in the Mets first, and Ellis Valentine comes to the plate. The Mets right fielder today. Kruko, the stretch and the delivery, and it's a 681. That will put us on the ballpark chart. A 681 is going to be a base hit. Plus, plus. All right. 681 falls between 680 and 694. This is a long single. The plus, plus indicates a long single. For Ellis Valentine, goes to right field. Scoring is Tavares. Going to third is Mazzilli. So there's Mets at the corners. Leon Durham throws that ball back into the infield. And now it's Hubie Brooks with a 1-0 Mets score. Kruko the stretch and the delivery is a 430. So now we're on the batter's card for the first time in the 400 zone. A 430 is a ground ball to Ivan de Jesus. He's going to go the short way to Steve Dillard. And that will retire the Mets in inning number one. Just that easy is season ticket baseball. All right, Mike Scott comes up now for, or goes to the mound now. And Ivan de Jesus and the Cubs come to bat in the bottom of inning number one. With the Mets leading 1-0. Jesus, an awful 1981 season, but we'll try him in the leadoff spot for now. That crisp 276 on base percentage is not going to keep him there for very long. The pitch from Mike Scott is a 680, is a 638, excuse me. A 638 is hit in the air to center field. We add five for the home team advantage. 
That bumps it to 643. It's still a fly ball to center. Mookie Wilson is there, and he puts it away for out number one. Now Steve Dillard. Another crisp on-base percentage, in this case, 268. Scott kicks and deals. That's a 139, so we're on the pitching card. That is lifted to left field. Under it is Lee Mazzilli, and there's two down in the Cub first. Here's Bill Buckner. And the delivery is a 266. Left-handed batter is Buckner. 266 puts us deep to right. So we're going to have our first deep drive, deep to right field for Billy Buck. Here's our deep to right field chart. We have no temperature adjustment. Buckner's power number is a 6. So we're going to add that to our 2D tents. We get a 4 and a 6 makes 10, plus Buckner's 6 makes a 16. It's to right and deep. Back goes Ellis Valentine, warning track, wall, and Buckner goes deep in his first at bat of the second half and ties the game at 1. Cub fans going nuts. My favorite player of all time going deep. All is right in the world. Mike Scott kicks and deals to Durham. It's a 172, so we're on the pitcher card. This is grounded to Dave Kingman, who gloves it and feeds Mike Scott covering first, and that will retire the Cubs in the first. After one complete, it's a 1-1 ball game. Each team picks up a single tally in their first inning. This is season ticket baseball. Okay, here we go. Top of inning number two, Stearns, Flynn, and Scott coming for the Mets against Mike Kruko. Kruko kicks and deals. It's a 123, so it's on the pitcher card, a 3XX. All right, so we're going to go to a different role here. Keeping the 23 in the 10s and 1s digit. So it becomes now a 323. And we're going to go to Stern's card. Okay, so this is hit on the ground to first. Buckner knocks it down, makes a nice play, but can't make a play to first base. Stern's will get an infield single. And the Mets have a good start in the second. Here's Doug Flynn. Kruko the stretch. The pitch to Flynn is a 178. And it's a wild pitch. That'll send Stearns to second base. Flynn still at bat. One ball, no strikes to him. The pitch, 165. Base hit to center field. Bobby Bonds charges it, but Stearns is going to score easily from second base. Bonds' throw comes into second. It's 2-1 Mets. Here's Mike Scott coming to the plate. And we pull out our pitcher hitting card for this experience. And here we are. Now, for Mike Scott... We're looking at a couple of things. We have a contact rating of one, and we have an I rating of a four. So we're gonna keep this handy down here. Um, and he's a two bunter. So I think what we're gonna do Yeah. Uh, how do we want to play this? <laughs> Time out. I think we're going to have Scott lay one down here. His bunting rating is a two, as I showed you. So, how do we bunt? Well, we have a 
two D10s, and we add that to his bunt rating of two. Now, what he's trying to do is to bunt Doug Flynn to second base. So, Crook go to the stretch, checks Flynn, and delivers. And it's going to be a bunt number of a four. Okay, now... This is a soft line out. It's a bad bunt. To Ken Reitz at third base. He's going to catch it. And then, because Flynn was too far off first base, Reitz fires to Buckner, and they get a bunt double play on a 5 3 line out. So now there's two outs and nobody aboard for Mookie Wilson. Kruko's pitch is a 180. It's a blooper to center field. It's going to drop in front of Bobby Bonds, and the Mets have another base runner. The fourth hit allowed by Kruko. And I think we're going to try and steal a base here. Why not? All right. So, with two outs, Mookie Wilson's going to try and steal. Here's how the steal attempts work. First thing you need to do is to establish a lead. So you take the steal rating, which in his case is a 5. You add that to the 2D10s, and it has to be greater than 10 plus Kruko's hold rating, which is 1. So it's probably going to be, because his steal rating is a 5. He's already halfway there. And he does. So we have a 5. We have a 5. Plus 9 is 14. Plus 5 is 19. We compare that to Kruko's hold rating, which is a 1 plus 10, which is 11. So Mookie does, in fact, get the jump by a score of 19 to 11. Now we take the speed rating. The speed rating versus the catcher's arm rating. So we got to bring Jody Davis into this now. Jody Davis' arm in 1981 is a five. So what we're going to do is we're going to add Mookie's five plus the two D10s. And then take Jody's arm, 10 plus Jody's arm, which will be 15. So the number to beat here is a 15. Mookie's got five already. And Jody Davis shoots him down. Just barely. With a peg down to Ivan De Jesus, who applies the tag, and that will end the Mets' second inning. So we go to the bottom of the second. And we've actually demoed a lot of stuff here so far. We've done a deep drive. We've done a bunt. We've done a stolen base. Uh, bottom of the second coming. It's 2-1 Mets. All right. Bonds, Morales, and Reitz coming against Mike Scott. The kick and the delivery is a 380 for Bonds. That's going to be on Bobby's card. And hey, got him on the broccoli cauliflower medley and a little nacho cheese. Yes. Morales now. Scott wines and deals. This will be a 436. Against a right-handed pitcher, Mike Scott is a righty. A 436 is grounded to short. Frank Tavares is up with it, and he will throw to first for out number two, and now Ken Reitz. Scott winds and deals. A 252 for Reitz. Right-handed batter is Reitz. 252 is... Oh. We have to add in our digits, so we do our blue number now, 582 
Five, eight, X, and we steal the ones digit on a single X, 582. So now we're gonna do our first defense check. So to figure, to understand this, you have to understand, first of all, the number system. So when you're in the 580s, you're dealing with the center fielder because of the eight on the defensive uh, symbols for the defense, you have an eight. So the 500s tell you it's a defense check. The eight tells you that it's for the center fielder. And then the single digit, zero to nine, tells you what it's going to be on that card. So in this case, we're talking about Mookie Wilson. And it's a 582 for Mookie. Every player's defense is found in the upper right corner. So a 582 is a fly ball to um, center field. Mookie is going to make the catch. Now you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, Kurt. What is the R3 question mark exclamation mark symbol mean? Well, that's a good question. And what that means is if there is a runner, they must challenge the fielder's arm. Okay. But we don't have a base runner. In fact, that's out number three. So the inning is over. And that's how you do a defense check in season ticket. We've played two innings. And the score, Mets 2, Cubs 1. Kruko back out for inning number 3. Tavares, Mazzilli, and Kingman coming up against Mike Kruko. Tavares walked and scored in the first. Pitch to Frank is a 644. So we're back to the ballpark chart because we're in the 600s. A 644. Is hit, in the, is hit in the air to center field. This is Bobby Bond's country, and he makes the catch for out number one. Lee Mazzilli at the plate. This is a 198 for Lee. It's a blooper down the right field line, and it's going to drop. Durham's got to run it down. It kicks into foul territory. Mazzilli... Around first, he's going to cruise into second with a double. And uh, the Mets have another runner in scoring position now with, with one out for Kingman. Kruko the stretch. The, the pitch to Kong is a 4.43. Right-handed pitcher. 4.43 is grounded to... Yvonne de Jesus at shortstop in front of Lee Mazzilli. So, um, that will hold Mazzilli at second, and then Ellis Valentine will be up with two outs to drive it, maybe drive in Mazzilli. Kruko the stretch and the delivery. It's a 130, it's a 435. Right-handed pitcher. And it's pulled down the left field line. This is gonna get into the corner. Jerry Morales has to dig it out of there. Mazzilli's gonna score easily, and Valentine has himself a two-out RBI double. 3-1 Mets, and Hubie Brooks comes to the plate. Pitch to Hubie, 552 will be another defense check. So the 552, and this is the last time I'm going to do this, I promise, because I think you've got it by now. But 552 will be a third base. Five is a defense check, 500. The second five tells you third baseman is being tested here. And then the two... Just tells you what to look at, in this case, on Reitz's card. So, 
We have a 552. And that is grounded to reach. It would be a double play if we could get one or if we needed one, but we don't. And that's out number three for the Mets. They get another solo run on a couple of hits. We go to the bottom of the third, and it's 3-1 Mets. Mike Scott will pitch to Jody Davis, Mike Kruko, and Yvonne Jesus at the top of the Cubs order in inning number three. Scott kicks and deals. It's a 396, which will be on Jody Davis's card. And there's a base hit for Jody Davis. Mookie Wilson throws it back in. And that's going to bring up Kruko. Kruko's uh, hitting in 1981, he's got an eye. His I rating is a 2. His contact rating is a 1. And his bunt rating is a 5. I'm going to try and have him lay down a bunt. So here's our bunt chart. Remember with Mike Scott, we took his bunt rating and then we added the two D10s to it. So, actually all, four, all three dice and we add our D10s. I don't know if I did that with Scott. I might have missed that. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. With Kruko, 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 8 is 17. Plus, 5 more from Kruko's bunt rating makes 22. All right, so we have a chance for a 2-4 putout. But first, we have to make a defense check. The defense check will be for the catcher. In this case, it's John Stearns. He's got an arm of a five. We're going to roll again. All runners advance. The batter is out if we take the five. We add the three dice, and that's greater than 10 plus the batter's speed. Well, Mike Kruko's speed is a zero, so he's overwhelmingly likely to be thrown out, but let's see what happens. Stern's throwing is a 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 9 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So 19 compared to 10, and Kruko is thrown out 2 to 4. On the bunt, that will move Jody Davis to second base. And now it's Ivan DeJesus at the plate. Scott the stretch. The delivery is a 349. For De Jesus, and it's chopped on the infield. Dave Kingman to his right, and there's nobody at first base. De Jesus is going to beat the wrap. Davis moves to third. There's Cubs at the corners now with one out in the third, and Steve Dillard coming to the plate. Golden opportunity for the Cubs to cash in here. Mets are playing a double play depth, the pitch. is a 150. This is hit to left. Movie star handsome Lee Mazzilli is under it. And he's coming in, and Jody Davis cannot tag and score. Dillard didn't get it deep enough, and that'll bring up Buckner with two outs. All right, so we got Davis at third, De Jesus at first, and Buckner at the plate. Scott in a legitimate jam here, but he's one pitch away from getting out of it. The pitch to Buckner is a 555. So that's going to be a defense check, and it's going to be a check on Hubie Brooks, the Mets third baseman. QB's defensive chart looks like this. A 555 is a grounder to his left. He gloves it. He fires to Dave Kingman, and that's going to retire the Cubs in inning number three. After three complete, it's Mets three, Cubs one. A couple of things that I know that you're seeing, but I'm compelled to tell you anyway. You should see that unless I'm going to the strategy card... 
these at bats are being resolved with one roll of the dice and that's kind of nice but at the same time you can see that there's a lot of different outcomes that you could potentially have a lot of uh what's the word i'm looking for a lot of different factors of baseball taken into account whether it's the ballpark the defense of the players the lefty righty splits the pitching strategy, all of it is taken into account here. Proof that you can do uh, one roll batter outcomes and still take in a wide variety of play results. Kruko is going to get Stearns, Flynn, and Scott, the 7, 8, 9 batters in the Mets order here in the top of the fourth. The pitch is a 167, so that's on Kruko's card. And that's a base hit to center field. Drops in front of Bobby Bonds. Bobby's going to throw it back in. And the Mets are giving Mike Kruko more trouble here to lead off the third. Now, Stearns could run a little bit. Flynn is at the plate. Kruko the stretch. The pitch to Flynn. Stearns is not going. That's a 466. So it's on Flynn's card against a right handed pitcher. Ground ball reeks. He's going to go to Dillard for one. And the relay to Bill Buckner is not in time. Flynn beats the rap at first. Stearns is retired 5 4 on the fielder's choice. And that'll bring up Mike Scott one more time. And I'm going to try this bunt thing and see if I can do it the right way for him this time because I think I might have messed that up uh, the first time. All right, his bunt rating is a two. We're going to take all three dice and add them. He squares to bunt the pitch from Kruko. Two plus two is four plus nine is 13 plus nine is 22. So we're going to test Jody Davis's arm and see if Scott can beat the rap on this. Jody Davis has an arm of a five. Scott's speed is a zero, just like Kruko's was, is. And Davis is going to fire him Fire him out at first base, so it's going to be a sacrifice by Scott. Davis throws to Dillard covering. That'll move Flynn to second base with two outs now and Mookie coming to the plate. Kruko the stretch and the pitch to Mookie is a 387. And that falls in this range. It's grounded to Dillard. And Steve is going to go to Buckner, and that will retire the Mets in inning number four. It's the first inning in which Kruko has held the Mets scoreless. We go to the bottom of the fourth with your score. Mets three, Cubs one. It'll be Durham, Bonds, and Morales coming up for the Cubs in the bottom of the fourth. Mike Scott getting the job done early here. All right, so here's Durham. Scott kicks and deals. It's a 550. So that'll be a defense check for Hubie Brooks one more time. We look at Hubie's upper right corner defense box. It's grounded to Hubie, and he's going to make the play to Dave Kingman for out number one. Would be a double play if we had a double play situation, but we don't. Bonds coming up now. Scott kicks and deals. It's a 592. So this will be a defense check for the right fielder. That's Ellis Valentine. Valentine on a 592 is a fly ball to right field. He's going to make the catch for out number two. And that'll bring up Jerry Morales with two outs and nobody aboard in the Cubs' fourth.
Scott kicks and deals. That is a 628, so we're on the ballpark card. 628. We add five because of the home field advantage. So it's actually going to be a 633, and that's hit to center field. Mookie Wilson is there, and he puts it away for out number three. After four in the books, Mets three, Cubs one. Fifth inning coming, it'll be Tavares, Mazzilli, and Kingman coming for the Mets. All right. Tavares, Mazzilli, Kingman, two, three, four hitters in New York's order. Okay, now is a good time to talk about stamina because Kruko and Scott are both at their stamina limit. So what happens? Well, what happens is fatigue starts at zero. Stamina rating is the number of innings in which a pitcher can pitch without risk of fatigue. Well, for Kruko and for Scott, but I'm showing you Kruko's card at this moment, stamina is a four. Now, after exceeding stamina, any base runner, hit, walk, or hit by pitch, adds one to the fatigue. For rolls, of, the effect of fatigue is for rolls of 600 to 699, you add 10 for each level of fatigue. Rolls below 600 are not affected by fatigue. So... As soon as the base runners start to pile up here, what you're going to see is that the ballpark card becomes more and more and more likely to be hits and even eventually deep drives that are going to bring runs home. So you got to be careful starting in this spot for Kruko. So let's see what happens. I don't have anyone going in the bullpen. I always house rule that a relief pitcher has to be going for two batters before you can bring him in. So Kruko to Tavares. The pitch to him is a 639. So we're on the ball. And 693, excuse me, 693. And this is going to be a base hit for Tavares. That will increase Kruko's fatigue rating. So I'm going to start some action in the bullpen uh, for the Cubs. And I'm going to go with Uh, I'm going to go with Bill Cottle, a right-hander. He's going to start to throw. Now it's Mazzilli to face Kruko. Cubs infield playing for two. I could send Tavares, but you, know, you get a long one, and then you're wondering why you did that. The pitch is a 181, no, I'm sorry, a 118, I'll get it right. So we have another one of those conversions. Instead of a 118, we move to a 318. And that'll be on Mazzilli's card, and hey, got him on a bender. Strikeout number three, and the first out in the Cubs' fifth inning. Now it's Kingman 0 for 2. Uh, okay. Kruko the stretch. The pitch to Kingman is a 655. I'll get it right. And a 675 is a bloop single, but we add 10. And it's going to be 685. That becomes a single plus plus, which means it's a long single, and Tavares is going to go to third. So now there's Mets at the corners with Valentine coming up. 
could go to Cottle here. I would love to get Kruko through this inning because he's due up third in the bottom of the fifth. So I'm going to give him one more batter, at least. Cub infield playing for two. Valentine's having a nice day. He's two for two with a double and a pair of ribbies. Kruko the stretch and the pitch to Valentine is a 260, 226. And that's against a right-handed batting Valentine. And look at this. It's grounded to uh, Yvonne de Jesus. He's going to go to Dillard for one, and the relay to Buckner is in time for a rally killing, soul crushing 6 4 3 double play turned by the Cubs. And that gets Kruko out of the mess. So now it's Mike Scott's turn to deal with fatigue because if you look at his card, his stamina number, it's the same as Kruko. It's a four. So, hits, base runners of any description are going to add to his uh, fatigue as well. Reitz is up first. He's 0 for 1. Scott kicks and deals. That is a 4.29. Scott is a right-handed batter, right-handed pitcher. It's grounded to Frank Taveras. He cuts it off from going up the middle, plants and throws to Dave Kingman at first, and there's one down. Now it's Jody Davis. Scott delivers a 137. Hit in the air to left. Lee Mazzilli is there, and he's going to put it away for out number two. So instead of burning a pinch hitter, I'm going to let Kruko bat here and try and get him through another inning and save my bullpen a little bit. Here's our pitcher hitting card. Kruko's numbers one more time for contact. He's a one. And for I, he is a two. So not a very good hitter in 1981. Scott delivers. It is a 213. Kruko is a right handed batter. And Kruko grounds it to Tavares at short. Frank is up with it and throws to Kingman, and it's a 1 2 3 fifth inning for the Cubs. We go to the sixth with your score. Mets three, Cubs one. Kruko coming back out on an extremely short leash. He will face Brooks, Stearns, and Flynn, the six, seven, eight batters in Joe Torrey's batting order. The date is August 10th, 1981. Brooks is 0 for 2. The pitch from Kruko is a 454. Right-handed pitcher. And this is Cork to center field and deep. It's going to split Durham and Bonds and get to the wall. Brooks around second. Will Cruz into second. Around first, will Cruz into second with a double. And here's Stearns. This may be Kruko's last batter. Stearns is two for two. Kruko the stretch and the delivery. Caudill is ready in the bullpen. A 368. Ground ball to Jesus. He gloves it and throws it wild past Buckner. Stearns is going to go to second on the two base error. Brooks will come home and it's four to one Mets. And now. Joey Amalfitano is out of the dugout, and he is going to make a change here. It's going to be Bill Caudill coming on. The error by DeJesus drives Kruko from the game. So Caudill is on. First, we'll tell you about Kruko's day. Five-plus innings. 10 hits allowed. He walked two and he struck out three. He allowed four runs. At least three of them are earned. 
Flynn is coming to the plate. Scott is on deck. Bill Caudill in 1981, 30 games, 10 starts, a 1-5 record with a 5.83 earned run average. He's going to bat ninth. And then I'm going to do something else. I'm going to get Raleigh Eastwick starting to throw behind him. Uh, in case this doesn't go well for Caudill. Here's Flynn, runner on second, caught all the stretch, the pitch. It's a 198, blooper, jam job. Gonna get over Buckner's head and be trouble, it's gonna get down. Durham's gotta go chase it. Stearns will score, 5-1 Mets. Flynn gets to second with a double. And that's gonna bring up Scott, it's 5-1 Mets. All right, Mike Scott's batting numbers. He has an eye of a four and a contact number of a one. So we'll keep that handy. Caudle the stretch and the delivery. It's a 260. And that's against a right-handed batter, so a right-handed pitcher. A 260 is going to be the left and deep for Scott. All right, we need our ballpark card. Power on Scott is a zero, so there's no adjustment there. It's the left field numbers. We're going to add our two D-10s to Scott's zero, and it's an eight. All right. We have timeout. Okay, so we have an eight. We have a long single, and Scott's got to go for second base. So to do that, we're going to challenge the outfielder's arm. So we're going to add our... Or speed, first of all, of our pitcher, Scott's speed is a zero. So everything is going to be on these dice. Jerry Morales is the left fielder. His arm in left is only a one. So 10 plus his arm makes 11. So these three dice have to beat 11, and he'll get a double. He does. It's a 12, and he gets the double. He stretches it. And that will not only score Flynn from second, but it's going to put Scott in scoring position himself. Now it's Mookie Wilson at 6-1 Mets, and there's still nobody out in the Mets' sixth. Caudle the stretch, and the delivery is a 138. Hit in the air to left, but not deep. Morales coming in, and he's going to make the catch for out number one. Here's Tavares. Frank is one for two. Caught all the stretch, and the delivery is a 628. And that's popped up. Wouldn't be a home run in a phone booth. Drifting into foul territory is Ivan De Jesus, and he's going to make the catch for out number two. And now it's movie star handsome Lee Mazzilli, one for two. Caught all the stretch, the delivery is a 527 so we have a catcher defensive check jody davis 527 that's going to be a base on balls for lee mazzilli there's two mets on now with two outs in the sixth and kong comes to the plate kingman one for three Caudle struggling, needs a good pitch to get out of this. The pitch, the, the delivery is a 685. That doesn't have a good ring to it. A 685 is going to be a base hit. That will be a long single. It's going to score Scott, and it's going to send Mazzilli to third. 7-1 Mets. 
And Ellis Valentine comes to the plate. The Mets have batted around in the sixth. This could be Caudill's last batter. Raleigh Eastwick is ready in the bullpen. 7-1 Mets, the pitch. 492 is to center field and deep, but it's going to be out number three. And Bonds makes the catch. That'll retire the Mets, but they get a big four spot on four hits. A crucial error. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Mets seven, Cubs one. Top of the order coming for the Cubs against a tiring Mike Scott. So Joe Torre is going to have to keep an eye on his starting pitcher here. Cubs with a golden chance against a fatiguing pitcher. I'm not going to start anybody in the bullpen yet because I don't... Yeah, I think it's too early. So we're going to let DeJesus bat here. He's one for two. The pitch from Scott is a 647. So we're on the ball, the ballpark card. We add five. So it's a 652. Ground ball to Doug Flynn. He's going to make the play to Dave Kingman. And there's one down. Nine in a row retired now from Mike Scott. Steve Dillard comes up. He's 0 for 2. Bill Buckner is on deck. The pitch from Scott. 235 is a right-handed batter. 235, ground ball, Hubie Brooks to his left. Cuts it off from going into left field and makes a nice throw to Dave Kingman for out number two. Bill Buckner comes up now with two outs and nobody on. He homered in the first to account for the Cubs' only run in this ball game. The pitch to him is a 197. Jam job blooper. Going to get over Tavares' glove into left field for the second hit for Buckner today and the fourth hit for the Cubs. That's going to add fatigue to Scott, but we're going to try and get him through the inning. Durham comes to the plate 0 for 2. Scott, the stretch and the delivery is a 165. Ball four, he walks the bowl. That'll bring up Bonds. Bonds is 0 for 2. Scott, the stretch, the pitch to Bobby. 544. So this will be a defense check for Flynn at second base. The 44, a ground ball to Doug Flynn. He's to his left. He plants and throws to Kingman, and that will retire the Cubs in the sixth. We go to the seventh with your score. Mets 7, Cubs 1. Caudle is going to come back out, try and give me another inning. No point in burning through the whole bullpen and the first day back in the split season. All right, so it'll be Brooks, Stearns, and Flynn, six, seven, eight batters in the Mets seventh. Pitch from Cottle, and I'm throwing dice all over the room. It's a 265 against the right handed batting Brooks. This is deep to left. Hubie's power is a three. So we're going to add that to our D10s. Here's our left field and deep. Seven, nine. Brooks into left field. Into left center. It's going to split Morales and Bonds. And Hubie's going to get another double. His second of the day. Eastwick is ready, but... I'm going to give Caudle one more batter here. Stearns, two for three. Mets are leading 7-1. The pitch. Uh, Caudle's stamina, we're already in. Caudle's already got fatigue here. This is a 476. And 
and it's grounded to Reitz. That's going to hold Brooks at second, and Ken makes the play to first for out number one in inning number seven. Now it's Doug Flynn, two for three, with a double. Doug Flynn has a double in this game. Coddle the stretch, the pitch, is a 479 against the right-handed Doug Flynn. One more chance for Reitz. He gobbles it up and throws to Buckner for out number two. Here's Mike Scott. And here's our pitcher hitter card. A 455. Mike Scott's I rating is what we're looking at. Scott's I rating is a 4. A 455 is popped up. Drifting into foul territory is Steve Dillard, and that's going to retire the Mets in inning number 7. It's time to stretch them out at Wrigley Field. With your score, Mets 7, Cubs 1. I'm going to have Mike Scott keep going here, obviously, since I let him bat in the top of the inning. It'll be Morales, Reitz, and Davis, and if anybody gets on, the pitcher's spot. Mets lead 7-1. Scott winds and deals. A 273 against the right-handed batting Morales is deep to left. All right, so we're going to add 20 now. And roll our D10s. First, we have to check Morales' power number. It's just a 1. So we're going to add our D10s. It would be a 14. And that's under it. it. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Under it is Mazzilli, and that's out number one. Here comes Reitz. Ken is 0 for 2. Scott kicks and deals, and this will be a ballpark check. Um, 691 plus 20 is to left and deep. I'm sorry, to center and deep, 691 plus 20 is 711. Remember, friends, there's three kinds of people, those that can do math and those that cannot. 711 is deep to center. So we're going to take Reitz's power number, which is a 2, and add the D10s. It's an 11, and it's going to be extra bases for Reitz. Around first goes Kenny, and he's got a one-out double, and here comes Jody Davis. That will start the Mets' bullpen getting a little busy here in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, Ray Searage starts to throw, the right-hander, and future pitching coach of a number of ball clubs. Davis is one for two. Scott, the stretch, and the delivery is a 262 against the right-handed batting Davis. And it's deep to left. Plus, plus six for Davis's power. We're going to add six to the D10s. 14. Mazzilli's going to make the catch. Now... Uh, tagging at second base is Reitz, but he's not going to advance. He will hold, and that will bring up Caudill with two outs now, and Reitz still at second. So the Cubs are going to go to the bench and try and bring home their second run of the game. The pinch hitter will be Mike Lum. Lum batting for Cottle. Lum hit 241 after being picked up from Atlanta in May of 81. I can't believe I remember that, but I do. Uh, 
All right, Cottle goes two innings, allows four hits, walks one, doesn't strike out anybody, allows two runs, and only one of them is earned. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so Lum is up there now against Scott. The pitch is a 170. Hit on the ground to Dave Kingman. To his right, he gloves it and feeds Mike Scott, covering, and that will end the Cubs' seventh. We go to the eighth. With your score, Mets, seven, Cubs, one, we're going to get a new Cub pitcher. It's going to be Raleigh Eastwick. He will bat in the nine spot in the order. And he will face the top of the Mets order in inning number eight. With Mookie Wilson leading it off. Again, one roll, resolving these at bats. Wilson, one for four. The pitch, 6-12. So we're back to the ballpark card. Popped him up. Steve Dillard in foul territory is going to make the play for out number one. Frank Tavares comes up now. Two sixty seven. Right-handed batter, ground ball reads. Ken by the bag, gloves it, and throws to Buckner for out number two. And here's Mazzilli, one for two with a pair of walks. Pitch from Eastwick, a 635, so a ballpark card. Hit in the air to center. Bobby Bonds with room is going to make the catch for out number three. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Mets 7, Cubs 1. Top of the order coming for the Cubs. Scott is still getting away with being fatigued, so I'm going to let him keep going, but Searage is ready in the Mets bullpen. It'll be DeJesus, Dillard, and Buckner in the Mets, and the Cubs 8th, excuse me, the Cubs 8th inning. All right. DeJesus, one for three. The pitch from Scott is a 521. So that'll be a defense check for John Stearns. And hey, struck him out. Stearns frames that one. DeJesus caught looking, and that will be strikeout number two for Mike Scott. Dillard up now. He's 0 for 3. Buckner will be next. The pitch to Steve Dillard is a 637. Hit in the air to center. Mookie Wilson in left center is going to make the play, and that's out number two. Now it's Buckner. Two for three for Billy Buck. Scott kicks and deals. 682. <laughs> We're going to add 30, and that's going to be to center and deep. Buckner's power number is a six. Get it. 13, back goes Wilson. He's got room, and he puts it away for out number three. One more biscuit for breakfast, and Bill Buckner has his second bomb of the day. We go to the ninth. With your score, Mets 7, Cubs 1. Eastwick is going to keep going. It'll be Kingman... Valentine and Brooks, a trio of right-handed sticks in the Mets' ninth. Raleigh winds and deals. 6.59. No additional fatigue yet, so it's grounded to Reitz. K 
ends up with it and throws to Buckner for out number one. Ellis Valentine, two for four. Eastwick winds and delivers, 4.59, right-handed pitcher, hitting the air to right and deep, Durham back, warning track, and he's got it for out number two. Brooks, two for four, a pair of doubles on his ledger for the day. The pitch from Eastwick is a 6.33, Hit to center, but not deep. Bobby Bonds is there, and that will retire the Mets. Six up and six down for Eastwick in his two innings of work. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Mike Scott's going to try and finish the deal. Your score, Mets seven, Cubs one. Durham, Bonds, and Morales coming up in the Cubs ninth. They've got some work to do. Scott... Wines and delivers. 542 is a defense check. That will be for Doug Flynn. Flynn cuts it off from going up the middle, plants and throws to Kingman for out number one. One down in the ninth. Here's Bonds, 0 for 3. Scott deals. It's a 360. And hey, struck him out for strikeout number three. Second time he's gotten Bobby and that makes Jerry Morales the last chance saloon for the Cubs. Scott winds and delivers. 414. Ground ball, Tavares. Frank's up with it and throws to Kingman and that will... End the ball game with a 7-1 Cubs win, let, or Mets win, excuse me. 7-1 Mets win. Let's give you the totals. For the Mets, seven runs, 13 base hits, and they committed no errors. The Cubs, one run, five hits, and they committed one error. Uh, the winning pitcher is Mike Scott. We're also going to call him the MVP of the game for a complete game five-hit job on the Cubs. The loser is Mike Kruko. We'll say he's 0-1 in the second half. So the Cubs fall to 0-1. All right, this is second season baseball. And there will be more of it coming on my channel as I continue with the 1981 Cubs second half replay. Thank you for being with me. Don't forget to check out channel membership by following the link in the description of this video. And I hope you have a great day. So long, everybody.